The animation begins on the island of Berk, where the Vikings live. The Vikings build a village on the remote island, but life there is not very safe because almost every night, they have to fight against dragons who take their livestock and damage buildings. In the middle of the fight, a young man named Hiccup was seen who had a slender body in contrast to the other Vikings, who had large and muscular bodies. Hiccup is the son of the Viking chief named Stoic Vast. Every time a fight occurs, Hiccup is always told by his father and the fighters there to take cover because he is considered weak. While taking cover, his father also told Hiccup to help Gobber forge weapons that the Vikings would use against the dragons. During the attack that night, there was one dragon that the Vikings feared the most they called it the Night Fury. The dragon was black with a very deadly attack. Hiccup, who wants to be a dragon hunter, plans to capture the Night Fury using his design rope launcher weapon. Hiccup then went to find the right location and set up a position to prepare to shoot the dragon. When Night Fury passed over him, Hiccup opened fire and managed to hit it, making Night Fury fall into the forest. Hiccup, happy to have shot down the Night Fury, did not realize that another ferocious dragon was after him. The dragon immediately chased Hiccup. Meanwhile, Stoic, who saw his son in danger, immediately came to his rescue. With his punch, Stoic managed to paralyze the dragon and drive him away from there. But the Vikings were so focused on saving Hiccup that night that the other dragons managed to steal all their sheep. The Vikings then blamed Hiccup for the incident. Hiccup tried to defend himself by saying that he had shot down Night Fury in the forest, but the Vikings did not believe him. Then Hiccup was told to enter his house by Gobber, but Hiccup, still curious about Night Fury, secretly went to the forest through the back door. On the other hand, Stoic gathered people to join him in looking for the dragon's lair and then destroyed it from there. Stoic also asked Gobber for help to enroll his son in a dragon fighting training class so that Hiccup could join them in fighting the dragon in the next battle. The scene then shows Hiccup, still wandering around the forest looking for Night Fury, finally finding the trail where the dragon fell. When following the trail, Hiccup was surprised to see Night Fury lying helplessly as a result of being hit by his shot. Then he ventured to approach Night Fury and intended to kill him with a dagger. But when Hiccup saw his face, he abandoned his intention because he felt sorry for it. Hiccup instead cut the rope that entangled the dragon and released Night Fury. After being free, Night Fury immediately cornered Hiccup. Fortunately, Hiccup was not killed, and he just left Hiccup in the forest. After that Hiccup returned to his house where his father was waiting for him. Stoic said that he wanted Hiccup to start dragon training tomorrow morning and hoped that Hiccup could become a brave viking. When they both agreed Stoic said goodbye to his son to go to the dragon's lair. The next day Hiccup started training along with the rest of the youth group, namely Astrid, Fishlegs, Snoutlot, Toughnut, Roughnut, and Gobber, who would be their teacher. Gobber then introduced the first dragon, their training material, the Gronkle Dragon. Gobber tells them to try to survive and work together to defeat the Puffer Dragon. Its blasts can't hit them because they are very deadly. After that, the training began, Astrid and her friends were overwhelmed by Gronkle while Hiccup, who had no experience in fighting, surrendered to the Puff Dragon's attacks. Hiccup was almost killed, fortunately, Gobber came to his rescue. The training session was over, and before going home, Gobber reminded his students not to let their guard down because dragons always wanted to kill their opponents. After training, Hiccup did not return home but went to the forest to try to find Night Fury. It turned out that Night Fury was still there and was trapped in a small lake. Seeing that Hiccup realized that Night Fury could not fly because one of his tail fins was missing due to being hit by Hiccup's shot yesterday. Hiccup who saw that became even more sorry for him when Night also had difficulty finding food. In the evening, Hiccup came home and entered the dining room where Gobber and his friends were already there. While eating, Hiccup opened the book about dragons given by Gobber. Meanwhile, none of his friends cared about the book and left immediately after eating. There Hiccup found a sheet about the Night Fury dragon, which was still empty because, so far, no one had ever dared to fight it. Knowing this, Hiccup plans to approach Night Fury to find out about the Black Dragon. While in the ocean, Stoic and his troops found a dragon's lair covered by thick fog. Although the appearance was terrifying, Stoic was undaunted and ordered his troops to enter the island. The scene then moves to the forest. There Hiccup is seen coming back to feed Night Fury so he can approach him. Hiccup feeds the dragon with fish, and as the dragon eats the fish, Hiccup realizes that the Night Fury is not as fierce as the Vikings thought. It didn't take long for Hiccup to get close to Night Fury and befriend him. Hiccup named the Black Dragon Toothless. Hiccup, who felt guilty for injuring Toothless Tail Fin with his weapon, decided to return to the village and make artificial fins that could make Toothless fly again. Later that night at dinner, Gobber tells Hiccup and his friends that a dragon that cannot fly is as good as dead because he will not be able to go anywhere when threatened. Hearing that, Hiccup became even more intent on making artificial fins for Toothless. After his fin was finished in the morning, Hiccup met Toothless and brought him breakfast. There are many types of fish that Hiccup gives, one of which is a sea eel. 
When Hiccup gave the eel, Toothless was seen avoiding it. From here, Hiccup knows that dragons are afraid of sea eels. While Toothless was focused on eating, Hiccup secretly attached his artificial fin to Toothless' tail. After successfully installing, Toothless immediately flew while carrying Hiccup, who was still on his tail. As a result, Hiccup tried to hold on to Toothless' tail while controlling his fins. Then Toothless dropped Hiccup into the lake and he also fell because there was no one to control his fins. In the afternoon, Hiccup returned to practice fighting dragons with his friends and Gobber. There he saw his friends, who had difficulty facing the two-headed dragon. Hiccup then went forward to face the dragon using a sea eel to scare the dragon and then told it to retreat into the cage and close it. Hiccup's attempt was so successful that it stunned Gobber and his friends. After stalling the dragon, Hiccup leaves the training ground because he has business and will return tomorrow. After that, Hiccup got a lot of tricks to conquer the dragon that he learned from Toothless and applied during training. The residents also saw Hiccup's training activities, and their thoughts on it improved. Gobber and his friends are very proud of Hiccup but not Astrid, who is jealous of Hiccup's success. Meanwhile, Hiccup also managed to upgrade Toothless's fins, which can make him fly in balance, with Hiccup controlling him. On the other hand, Stoic and his troops were docking in the village. Stoic and his troops returned to the village because they did not find the dragon's lair, and he felt very disappointed because he failed to carry out his mission. Arriving at the village, Stoic met Gobber, who told him that now Hiccup had managed to find a way to tame the dragon. At the same time, Hiccup was flying with Toothless to test his artificial fins. Finally, Hiccup makes Toothless fly again, even though the fins must be controlled manually. When Toothless flew swooping to a high altitude, Hiccup accidentally released the control rope, making them free fall. Hiccup quickly grabbed Toothless and immediately held the control rope again, and they managed to fly. But this time Hiccup no longer used the guidance paper because the paper had flown away somewhere. He only relied on his instincts and his bond with Toothless. After flying, the two of them then rested on the beach. Suddenly, a small dragon appeared, wanting to ask Hiccup for food. Then Hiccup fed one fish to the small dragon, which made them immediately tame. Here Hiccup realizes that what the Vikings have done so far is wrong, and they shouldn't kill dragons to get rid of them because other ways can be a win-win solution. The next day Hiccup returned to dragon fighting training along with Astrid. This time whoever manages to defeat the dragon first, then in the next training, will fight the dragon one-on-one. -on -one. During the training session, Hiccup competed with Astrid, which Stoic and many other residents witnessed. When Astrid was preparing to kill the dragon, she was surprised to see Hiccup, who had already tamed the puffer dragon by stroking it, which upset Astrid. After the training, Hiccup returned to Toothless' place to feed him. Arriving there, Hiccup called Toothless' name, but there was no sign of an answer. It turned out that Astrid was already there waiting for him because she was curious about where Hiccup learned about dragons. Then Astrid saw Toothless running towards her and quickly pushed Hiccup to protect him. But Hiccup got up and immediately stopped Toothless, who wanted to attack Astrid. Hiccup told Toothless that Astrid was his friend so that he couldn't attack her, and Toothless calmed down. However, this did not apply to Astrid, who was very surprised and frightened and immediately ran back to the village to tell the others. Quickly, Toothless and Hiccup caught Astrid, took her flying, and stuck her in a tree. There Hiccup tried to talk to her, Hiccup asked Astrid to keep this secret from the villagers. Astrid then promised to keep it secret if he would help her, who almost fell from the tree. Hiccup then helped Astrid onto Toothless' back and asked Toothless to take them down but Toothless instead took them flying around the island. This made Astrid realize that dragons are not as fierce as she thought. When they were busy flying, Toothless suddenly took Hiccup and Astrid to a place with thick fog. There they saw other dragons carrying sheep and fish, and it turned out that Toothless took Hiccup and Astrid to the dragon's lair. There they saw the dragons dropping their food down. Hiccup and Astrid, hiding behind a rock, also saw a puffer dragon dropping its food. But as it flew away in annoyance, another huge dragon suddenly appeared from below and ate it. The giant dragon was named Deathly. Here the presence of Hiccup and Astrid is known by Deathly, and the dragon tries to attack them both. Fortunately, Toothless managed to get them out of the dragon's lair. Now Hiccup and Astrid find out that the dragons attacked their village and stole the sheep to give to Deathly so that he would not eat other dragons. Astrid wants to tell the village chief what she has just discovered but Hiccup wants to keep it a secret because he believes Toothless could be in danger if his father finds out about the dragon's lair. The next day Hiccup took his final test, which was to kill the nightmarish skull dragon while witnessed by all the residents. But Hiccup threw away his weapons and shields because he didn't want to hurt the dragon. Seeing that his son did not want to kill the dragon, Stoic shouted to stop the match. Stoic's voice surprised the dragon, and the dragon started to attack Hiccup even though Hiccup almost managed to tame it. While on the other hand, Toothless, who has sharp hearing and knows Hiccup is in danger, immediately runs toward the village. When the nightmare dragon wants to kill Hiccup, Toothless attacks the dragon. 
but the Vikings who saw that instead tried to catch Toothless. Hiccup tried to stop them but they didn't want to hear it. After that, Hiccup talked alone with his father. He said that dragons were not as fierce as they thought, and Hiccup also said that Toothless knew the dragon's lair. When Stoic heard that, he intended to return to the dragon's lair and take Toothless as his guide. Hiccup tried to stop his father because, in the lair, there was a giant dragon that his father would not be able to face, but his father did not want to listen and still planned to go there. His father said Hiccup defended the dragon, so he was not a viking. Hiccup could only stay on the floor watching his father leave. On the other hand, Stoic immediately gathered his troops and prepared to leave for the dragon's lair while carrying Toothless, who was chained to the ship. Hiccup could only watch his father's ship and his father's troops depart from the cliff. After all of Stoic's troops departed, Astrid asked Hiccup to realize that the Vikings were killing dragons instead of trying to befriend them. Astrid said that in 300 years, Hiccup was the first Viking to befriend a dragon. Hiccup then realized that his abilities could bring change to the Vikings. He then made up his mind to go and save Toothless. Hiccup Astrid and his other friends then went to the training ground. There Hiccup taught his friends to tame the dragon so they could ride it. At first, his friends are afraid, but after being convinced by Hiccup, they are brave enough to hold the dragon. On the other hand, Stoic, who managed to find the dragon's lair, ordered his troops to prepare an attack. With a giant catapult, they managed to destroy the nest wall. But when Stoic entered the lair, he saw tons of dragons attached to the cave walls like bats. But when Stoic wanted to attack the dragon, the dragons ran away, leaving the nest. Soon a giant dragon came out of the lair. Stoic, who saw it, was very surprised because the dragon's size was very large. Although the Vikings attacked it with giant catapults, their attacks did not affect Deathly, and the dragon easily destroyed the Viking army. Just as Stoic and Gobber were about to be attacked by Deathly, Hiccup Astrid and his friends arrived on a dragon from their training grounds. They shot the giant dragon down with a fire breath. Gobber, watching from below, said Hiccup was a stubborn Viking like his father. While above, Hiccup asked Fishlegs to find his weakness. He then said that the giant dragon had small eyes big nose relying on hearing and smell. Knowing this, Hiccup then began to strategize. He ordered Snoutloud and Fishlegs to stay at the blind spot and confuse the giant dragon while Roughnut and Toughnut were assigned to find out the dragon's breath limit, and how many times. While Astrid was distracted, the giant dragon Hiccup went down to free Toothless. When Hiccup tried to free Toothless, their ship was accidentally hit by the giant dragon's attack, causing Toothless to sink into the sea. Hiccup then caught up with Toothless and tried to open his chains, but he was out of breath and drowned. Then Stoic saved him, and he entered the sea again to save Toothless. Stoic and Toothless finally made peace. After that, Hiccup immediately flew with Toothless to help his friends fight the giant dragon, but they were all overwhelmed. Hiccup then had the idea to lure Deathly to fly towards a wisp of black clouds. Here Toothless continues to attack Deathly, but unfortunately, he is hit by Deathly's fire burst, which makes his artificial fins burn. Even so, he tried to fly and lure Deathly to the black clouds. When he felt high enough then, Hiccup lured Deathly to fly straight down, and at the right moment, Toothless shot fire into Deathly's mouth, which made the gas in his mouth trigger an explosion in his body. Finally, the two managed to destroy Deathly, but unfortunately, Hiccup fell into the explosion because his grip on Toothless slipped. After the fire was extinguished, Stoic looked for his son and saw Toothless lying limp. At first, Stoic thought that Hiccup had died, but it turned out that Toothless saved Hiccup in his arms. Stoic was very grateful to Toothless for saving his son, and the Viking troops applauded. A few days later, Hiccup woke up in his house. He saw Toothless as soon as he opened his eyes. Now, Toothless is given the freedom to live inside his house. Hiccup was very happy to know that, but when he got out of bed, he was surprised to see one of his legs missing and replaced with an artificial leg. When Hiccup left the house, he was greeted by his father and other residents. At this time, the Vikings treated dragons as their pets. Then Gobber gave an artificial fin to Toothless so that Hiccup could fly again with him. Then Hiccup flies with his friends, and the movie ends. The moral that can be learned from this animation is that we can learn to accept change, as when Hiccup has a new way not to kill dragons, and it proves to be the best solution for the Vikings because they can finally live in peace with the dragons. In addition, this animation also teaches us not to torture animals because animals have the right to live and be loved.